Today is Tuesday, March 12th. Free agency begins in the NFL tomorrow afternoon. Let's go to Cowboy Beat reporter David Moore to get his latest think. And now a word from our title sponsor. Are all financial advisors fiduciaries? Fewer than you think, not knowing could reduce your lifestyle. Hi, I'm Mitch Kramer, founder and CEO of Fluent Financial. A fiduciary is a regulatory term to reduce conflicts of interest in wealth management. A fiduciary always works in your best interest. A non-fiduciary advisor might put their compensation or company ahead of yours. At Blunt Financial, we are certified financial planners acting as fiduciary advisors. To learn more, go to FluentFinancial.com or Fluent Financial's YouTube channel. Introducing Star Power Smart Home Solutions, where cutting-edge technology meets effortless living. Control your entire home with just a tap on your smartphone. Adjust the lights, set the temperature, ensure your home is totally secure, all from the palm of your hand. Experience the ultimate solution in comfort and security for your family. Start by going to the website, GetStarPower.com. That's GetStarPower.com. Our guest again today, because he was with us just a few days ago, is David Moore in his 14th year as the beat reporter, the beat reporter of the Dallas Cowboys in his fourth decade writing sports in this area. And today we're going to look at the Cowboys' future. And I want to go to some particular players with you to begin this. We'll go to free agency a bit later. We'll go to the draft later. I'm going to start with players. Do the Cowboys keep Tony Pollard? The sentiment lately seems to be maybe leaning in that direction, but is he a number one running back? I think we saw last year, and even though he was coming back off the injury, his whole career has shown he is more of a 1B, I think, if you will. Mm-hmm. Um, and you saw the, the, the lack of burst again, last year was coming back off the injury. Some of that was going to be natural, but I don't know that you go through an entire college career and the first four to five seasons of your NFL career, which seems like the ideal formula to use you and then crank that up by 30 to 35% and expect to see the same results. If you would have gotten those results, you would have been in that position sooner. So I I could see, I think Tony Pollard's issue is going to be, there are a lot of really quality running backs out on the market now. But we've also seen how teams devalue those backs and aren't willing to pay that money. So um, is Tony Pollard the top running back in the market? No. Second? No. Third? Maybe no. no. I, I think you look at him about fourth or fifth in this free agent market. So... The money, he's going to make less money than what he made on the franchise tag last year for Dallas. Oh, maybe and, a lot less. Yeah, oh, I believe so. And then the question is, I think he would be amenable to coming back here. Uh, I don't think Tony Pollard is the sort of guy who is like, uh, and maybe to his detriment, oh, I've got to get all I can in this contract. It doesn't matter where I go. This is my last shot to get the big money. Um, he doesn't seem as motivated by that as some other players are at this stage of his career i'm not saying you should leave money on the table but i'm saying there's a chance but if he comes back it would be a more equal division of power at the running back position than it was last year is tyron smith's cowboy career over i believe it is um and i think there are a lot of factors here i know everyone points to last season and rightfully so uh, played 13 games. It's like he found the fountain of youth. Uh, his performance level was very high. Uh, played in the most games he has in, in a while. But what the Cowboys wrestle with here is, was that the aberration or is that season repeatable at this age, at this stage of his career, mm-hmm. based on his injury history? Now, we just talked about he played 13 games last season at a very high level. Mike McCarthy's been the head coach of this team for 67 regular season games. 
Tyron Smith has been available for a total of 30 of those 67 games over four seasons. Whoa. He played, while he did start 13 games last year, he played a total, a total of 17 games combined in the previous three seasons. So you can't just ignore that. You have to consider last season, I think there's a legitimate reason to consider consider it the outlier, the last great flash of reminding everybody how good this player is and he's not going to be able to play 13 games at that level going forward so that's why i believe they will move on david there's no question that dan quinn is a very popular and liked defensive coach and he he seemed from the outside to be very liked by his defensive players those players jordan lewis the cornerback, Durant Armstrong, the defensive end, Jason Kirst, the safety, the cornerback, Stefan Gilmore, the defensive tackle, Jonathan Hankins, and the defensive end, Dante Fowler, are all free agents. How many do you think follow Quinn to Washington? Well, if I remember off the top of my head, let's go back three years when Dan Quinn came here. Now, he had been out for half a season, from, but he came from Atlanta. How many people from Atlanta showed up on that defense? I believe it was three the first year. Yes. I would say two or three of these players are going to wind up in Washington. Just like I believe some players who play for Mike Zimmer in Minnesota in free agency are going to wind up on this Cowboys roster going forward because you want a few players in the locker, a few veterans in that locker room to reinforce your message on what you're doing and to be there to say, okay, oh, this is what he means by this. This is what he's getting at. This is why he's tr- teaching it that way. Uh, so I, I do believe two to three of these guys will wind up in Washington. The fact that this club is going all in with its coaching staff and assistants, they're all in one-year contracts, may that discourage free agents from coming here, thinking, you know what? After one year, I might be being coached by somebody else. You know, a lot of veterans at this stage are getting two-year deals that are, in essence, one-year deals. They're getting the money in the first, spreading it out over two. Um, I don't think it's going to impact that. Now, I believe if you were go- if Dallas was pursuing a high-profile free agent, which means they would have to pay that player a lot of money, mm-hmm. that might be a consideration. But I would still say, one, the overriding consideration is the money. Two... At the level that Dallas has shopped at in free agency, veteran free agency over the last seven years, I don't consider that to be much of of an impediment to anyone coming here. Um, So I I don't think so, but that's a legitimate conversation. Well, this club has, we've already ticked off, a lot of key free agent people. If you were to be able to keep only one of them, if David Moore was making the decision, which of the free agents to be would you choose to keep? Wow, that's a good one. Um, personally, for the level he performed and because of the position, I would say Stephen Gilmore. Because I think even at his age, um, what, what position would they have been in last year after losing Trayvon Diggs oh. early? Now, again, I know Duran, Duran Bland came up, and that's and and I don't believe Gilmore will be here because you're going to start with you know what you pay Trayvon Diggs, and he's coming back, and Duran Bland uh, is the future. They're going to go young there, and and Gilmore now is in a position of well, he's the third corner, and and you know how do you rotate it in? But I, I would love to keep him here just because of what he meant in the locker room, uh, just the settling influence he has on this defense, and just how he's still a very, very good player at this stage of his career. When, um, when people who do this for a living look back and graded the Cowboys draft last year, it was graded the least impactful rookie class in the entire NFL. This year... The Cowboys have less draft choices. They have, by my figuring, once they get their late five and late six compensatory picks, they will have only three of the first 175 players taken in this draft. Yeah. If it were you, what positions 
do you think you could target hoping that rookies could step in and play at those positions? The way this draft breaks down early and what their needs are, and we're talking the the you know the first two days, like you say, they're not they don't have picks there in the fourth and fifth. They use those for uh, you know they got Gilmore and they got Brandon Cooks last year, and those those are ways. So um, offensive line, and I and I say that tackle or center because I also believe that that Tyler Biotis will be out of their price range and will wind up somewhere else as well. So I think you're looking at him and Tyron Smith replacing both in that offensive line. Uh, the best offensive lineman available in the first round and the best linebacker available in the second round uh, or defensive tackle. But I would think linebacker is more likely uh, to still have quality there in the second round when they pick. Uh, I don't see how they can't go in that order at this point. And, you know, you mentioned last year's draft. That's interesting. I think Dallas got away from what made it so successful in last year's draft because my belief is, They reached about a half or three quarters of a plateau in the first round and the second round to get their first two players. Because I think they felt, well, look, no way Mozzie Smith is Air Force in the second. We really need a defensive tackle. He's the last one that's going to help us. This is a little high, but let's go ahead and do it. We have a good defense. We can make it work. I think the exact thing happened with Schoonmaker in the second round. I think they went, boy, the, the ones we really, really liked, we hoped to get are gone. But there's a big gap after this. We ha- we like Ferguson, but we haven't seen him do it yet. Let's uh, let's go ahead and do this here, and we can make it all work. And and it didn't work for them like past drafts have. David, I want to take the last few drafts in total. Last year, just ahead of Dallas, Buffalo traded up and took the tight end Dalton Kincaid, and said at the press conference that night, that they did so because they believed Dallas was going to take Dalton Kincaid. A few years ago, Philadelphia traded ahead just ahead of Dallas, the tight end Dallas Goddard. About four or five years ago, San Francisco jumped just ahead of Dallas to take a linebacker, Dre Greenlaw, that I know Dallas liked. Yeah, I, I hate to use the word leaks because that sounds political. But is there such a thing, does information like that leak and become available to other teams? I think teams look at drafting patterns and who teams like and what rounds they like to take them and have a pretty good uh, idea of, just like you do analytics on, on plays and games, you can do analytics on the draft. And you can say, oh, well, you know, this team, Normally, when they're late in the second round, this is what they like to do. This is, you know, this is X percentage. They take uh, this position, X percentage, they do this. Uh, so I think that um, I think that a lot of teams in this league have a good, pretty good feel for what teams are going to do. Um, but it, it, it's hard to say that doesn't factor in when, what the the Cowboys' entire draft board is being, you know, shown during their uh, uh, when when their uh, when the um, uh, winners of the lottery come by to experience and you know so uh, that th- there are enough draft board screen grabs of the Cowboys draft board and some conversations where you can certainly, if you want to interpret that, well maybe Dallas is a little. T- Maybe some in the Dallas organization are a little too forthcoming with uh, information. Uh, it, it would be hard to refute that, wouldn't it? I want to go back to free agency. I want to ask if you've heard one name, okay? Dallas fully admits it must repair its rushing defense. Last year, Mozzie Smith was not any answer at that spot, that big defensive run-stuffing tackle. In free agency, have you heard the name of Grover Stewart, the Indianapolis defensive tackle, who may not be a three-down lineman, but he is a monster run stuffer? Well, and he missed uh, six games, I believe, last year with his suspension. Yes. Um, But, yeah, uh, you know, he's a name you hear. 
uh, there are some pretty good defensive tackles out there that are run stuffers. And uh, uh, Grover Stewart, and he's younger than some of these other guys. You know, a lot of them are kind of Jonathan Hankins, I hate to say clones, but that <laughs> player who, uh, uh, you know, a, a true nose tackle who is just going to float around at this stage of his career to different teams and like, you know, uh, you know, plug the gap for them and then go on until you draft somebody who can do it, who's younger. Um, so no, I, I think that's a, a very good name to keep in mind. Um, you know, you, you have some other guys, uh, uh, Javon Kinlaw from San Francisco's in there, uh, some others, but it's, uh, I, I would be shocked if Dallas does not sign, uh, you know, Sheldon Rankins in Houston as well. I would be shocked if Dallas does not sign a veteran run stopping one technique in free agency. Finally, we're going to look a little further ahead in the future. There's, there appears to be a big contract coming for Dak. We know Lamb, Diggs has already gotten a lot of money. Parsons is going to get four boatloads of money. As we go to the future, do the Cowboys again seem limited by this giant amount of money they're going to give about four players. Well, this is why they need to hit on being a draft and develop team. Mm -hmm. The reason you hear Mike McCarthy constantly talk about being a draft and develop team and the, the organization has gone, uh, to borrow a phrase from Jerry Jones, all in on being a draft and develop team. Sometimes to the frustration of the fan base because they don't, look to make deals for veterans outside um, is because if you acknowledge you're going to have to pay an inordinate amount of your cap to four to five star players, players, very good players who are about to earn money going into their second contract, you need to be able to let go because you have someone else right behind them who can step into that role. Mm -hmm. And I'll give you an example that's what's been happening in the offensive line in recent years. That's why I believe Tyler Biotish, they will let him go. Uh, it's why Connor McGovern went to Miami. Like, you know, it's why Connor Williams uh, left in free agency the year before that. Very good players, a lot of starts, but they feel they got them at the most cost-effective part of their career. And now to continue to pay money to skill position players or difference makers – like a C.D. Lamb, like a Micah Parsons, like a Dak Prescott, you're going to have to let some players go you don't like because the market's going to be – you just can't pay everybody. But you need to have someone that you can step in and you feel you're not taking a step back. Well, you talked – you addressed perfectly the draft and develop. But isn't one of the Cowboys' problems right now that the last few years they've failed in that regard? For instance, they drafted both Joseph and Nation Wright a couple of years ago, and neither can start in the league as a cornerback. Joseph's long gone. They drafted Tristan. They would very feel they would feel very much now if not for Deron Bland. If they hadn't a hit on Deron oh. Bland, uh, not hitting on Wright and uh, Joseph would have been crippling for them. Tristan Hill, Neville Gallimore, now yep. Nazi Smith, and they They're still, still have looking to for one technique. technique. Yeah. Let's say again. And you're still looking for that position, right? In fact, one of the guys who could fill that position, John Ridgeway, they let go and he's now starting in Washington. Yeah. And mm -hmm. it, it goes on like that of, of players positions that may have missed on. And with that kind of high salary for a handful of players, those type of misses become much more critical to this team. And with only three picks in the first 175 this year, this is an almost cannot miss draft for the Cowboys. Agree completely. The, the, the three players, their top three players are going to have to step in and do something. And they need to get something out of Mozzie Smith and Schoonmaker from last year's draft. And to me, the interesting one's going to be Overshown because I think they felt going in that Overshown was the best position to actually make an impact for them last year. It was early when he got hurt, but I got the sense they were more excited about him than anyone. And I think he was, you know, 
a, a di- again, a different scheme here. Now, how is he going to fit with Mike Zimmer? He was the ideal re- uh, bridge player or, or move into the future for J. Ron Curse under Dan Quinn's system. Mm-hmm. But just how does Overshone fit into Mike? what Mike Zimmer wants to do with his linebackers? And that's going to be interesting to see as well. David, we so appreciate your time. Thank you. I look forward to catching up with you maybe after the draft or maybe some kind of mid-free agency. And That'd we'll be talk great. more about the Cowboys. Thanks, David. Thanks so much, Norm. Always enjoy it. See you, buddy. Thank you. Today's episode brought to you by Fluent Financial, Retire Sooner, Better Lifestyle, and by Star Power, Love Where You Live. Just Wondering is a production of DSP Media for FanStream Sports. You can find Norm's show along with other great programming at fanstreamsports.com. Thank you for listening to today's episode. If you enjoyed it, hit follow. And every weekday, a fresh new episode of Just Wondering will be delivered right to you. And if you enjoy this podcast, please share it with a friend. Finally, should you have questions or comments, please share them with us by going to X and our address at Norm's Clubhouse. That's Just Wondering with Norm Hitzkus. And every day, I'll be just wondering about something.